This video was made possible by Brilliant.org. The first 424 people to sign up with Brilliant will get 20% off their premium subscription. This video is not about what the longest train is. I mean, like, it's not about the longest physical train. The reason this video is about this and not this is because the answer to this is quite boring. It's this one. It was 4.5 miles long. Great. Fascinating, right? Let's move on. If you've watched any of these videos, you know that you're not getting the answer to what the longest train journey is right off the bat because it's not that simple. There's different categories and criteria and little minutia that I just need to explain. Namely, it's really, really hard to run a train super long distances. You see, here's a map. Every different color on this map represents a different track gauge in a different country. Much like different countries have different plug types and currencies and driving directions and measurement systems, the railroads of different countries have different widths of tracks. Previous testing has proven that trains don't work well off the track, so the trains of any given country only work in certain countries. This can create some difficulties. You'll notice on the map that Spain and Portugal have a different gauge than the rest of Europe. Finland does too, but that's just Finland being Finland. The supposed reason for Spain's different gauge, and this is not a joke, was so that the French couldn't invade by train. But nowadays, the Spanish might actually want to go to France, and up until recently, they couldn't. At least not by train, without changing trains. Spain built some high-speed lines in the standard gauge that France uses from the major cities to France. You can now take a direct train, for example, from Madrid and Barcelona to Paris, but in other areas, on the non-high-speed lines, you can't cross borders by train. If you want to take a train from Biarritz to San Sebastian, for example, you're out of luck because the Spanish tracks are 9.17 inches wider than the French ones, so you have to take the train to Hendai, walk all the way across this bridge, then catch the train from Irun. Or you could just take the bus. Now, you can actually switch the gauges of trains, but it's massively inconvenient. At best, it takes hours for a full-length passenger train, but some trains, like the legendary Trans-Siberian service from Moscow to Beijing, do exactly this. The train stops at the Mongolian-Chinese border for four hours while it's reconfigured for the thinner Chinese tracks. As it turns out, by doing this, this train is the third longest passenger service in the world, spanning 5,582 miles over six days. But just for some fun, let's do a rapid fire round of the longest passenger train services by country. In the United States is the 65 hour, 2,700 mile trip from Chicago to Los Angeles. In the United Kingdom, it's the 13 hour, 720 mile trip from Aberdeen to Penzance. In Canada, it's the 86 hour, 2,770 mile trip from Toronto to Vancouver. In Australia, it's the 65 hour, 2,700 mile trip from Sydney to Perth. And finally, in India, it's the 80 hour, 2,660 mile trip from Kanyakumari to Dibrugar. However, the world's second longest train service is, big surprise, also in Russia. It's also a Trans-Siberian service from Moscow to Vladivostok in 144 hours and 5,772 miles. But the longest train service goes to the least friendly Korea in the world, North Korea. You see, the longest train service in the world isn't really a full train. It's this train carriage. The North Korean State Railway runs this service from Pyongyang to Moscow by sending this sleeper car north to the border with Russia and then attaching it to the Russian train from Vladivostok to Moscow. This is technically a direct service since you never leave the carriage for those 206 hours and 6,380 miles, which makes this, definitively, the longest passenger train service in the world. But of course, there's a reason I keep saying passenger, because there are longer cargo services. China, in an effort to improve connectivity with the West, has started running cargo trains directly to Europe. And these aren't just for show. There's a legitimate place for cargo trains as a medium speed service between super fast cargo planes, which take about 12 hours to get to the UK, and cargo ships, which take 30 days to get to the UK. This 7,500 mile trip from Yiwu, China to London, England via the Channel Tunnel takes about 18 days to complete and can definitively be called the longest current direct train service in the world. If you're anything like me, however, that's still not enough time to learn calculus because it just seems like a bunch of nonsense numbers. That was, of course, until I tried Brilliant.org. Rather than just teaching you how to do calculus problems through memorization, they start by teaching the intuitive ideas behind calculus. By playing through the puzzles, you get to understand how calculus works. Brilliant also has tons of super interesting courses on topics like solar energy, probability, number theory, and machine learning, which similarly guide you by building up your intuition. 
You can take as many of these superbly designed courses as you want with their premium subscription, which, by being one of the first 424 people to click on the link in the description, you can get for 20% off.